Hey everybody, I'm Wing Skull. And I'm Adrian Dilly. And this is Marshmallow and Mimosa. Hello. Hi. Uh, so, as usual, let us start with what we're doing these days. You go first. I will go first. <laughs> so, um, my current reading list, I haven't been doing quite as much reading lately, mm-hmm. but I'm still working on that R.A. Salvatore trilogy that I mentioned recently, the Dark Elf trilogy, and I've been reading the second book, which is Exile, but I actually got it on audiobook. Um, I was mm-hmm. reading just a physical copy, but I decided to pick up an audiobook because I've been, uh, it's it's time for Book Bath Box to have all the boxes put together. That's a good thing to do while you're putting them together. Exactly. So um, I have 250 boxes that are going out here. And while I sit around wrapping books with tissue paper and putting all the things in a box, I'm going to listen to um, a bunch of audiobooks, and it's going to be great. Tell us about something cool that's going on in the book right now. What is something, like, neat and magic or something? Um... <laughs> And then you'd be like, I don't remember. I know, I'm like, you're putting me on the spot here. I, <laughs> I'm also trying to think of something. Like, the things that are jumping to my head are huge spoilers. Oh, so. um, okay. Well, fine. I was yeah. thinking of, like, world building something or other. But, uh, okay, okay, give me, like, one second. We'll, we'll cut out the pause. <laughs> oh, okay. No, this is actually something You didn't need I, to cut it out. No, I, well, this, this is, I just needed to pretend like I was going to take a break, and then I would suddenly remember. Mm. This is something that I love, mm-hmm. and I actually already knew about this from one of the short stories that I read, also from Ari Salvatore's, like, world with Driss Warden. There is a statue, it's a magical statue, that can summon this, like, spirit panther. <laughs> yeah. Cool. And the, the panther... Is it huge, or is it, like, normal Oh, it's size? huge. Okay. Yeah, it's a yeah. huge, huge cat. And this cat... Um, so... The person who actually owns the statue, um, or, like, has possession of the statue, I should say, because, you know, it's a panther. Nobody owns this panther. It's a... Is it a panther statue? Sorry. Just double check. Uh, you know, actually, I'm not sure. What? Okay. Anyway, go on. I was too concerned (laughs) with the fact that there was a giant panther that didn't really worry about where it came from. Um, (laughs) but there's this wizard that, um, I believe it was a wizard, who has the statue and calls forth the pan calls forth the panther and mm-hmm. um her name is Gwynethar. Oh, I was gonna say it was like a lion cat, but No. No. Um but Drist, the like main character, he is at the school with the wizard and meets Gwynethar and he's like, That is an amazing cat. I love that cat. <laughs> and the cat's like, I love you too and the cat starts to like dress more than she likes her, or, like, <laughs> yeah. s- statue owner person. So like <laughs> the wizard will be like, Gwynethar, appear. And then she'll appear and she'll just run over and be like, hey Driss, what's going on? Like, let's nice. go fight some things. Like my wizard's fine. <laughs> yep. And I really, really love that. So <laughs> that is the one thing that I will say from that. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah, so I'm really enjoying the audiobooks. It's definitely helping me feel like I'm moving forward a bit with my reading, even though I don't have time to really sit down and look at words on pages that much. Um, the other thing that I want to talk about is something that actually just happened a little bit before Adrian came over. Oh, right. Uh, so I was talking to one of my friends, and through various tangents, uh, <laughs> we started talking about, because this is apparently what I do with all my friends, it's just Same tangent. Here. Yeah, <laughs> everywhere. It's great. Um, Meetings at work, whatever. Yes. <laughs> it's just, it's life. This is the life that Tangents are life itself. Yes. <laughs> Episode title right there. <laughs> um, so the tangents led us to Japanese music, mm. specifically J-pop, J-rock, those sorts of genres. And I was sort of the stereotype anime kid in high school. I loved anime and Japanese music, and I felt extra cool because um, my family had had Japanese exchange students. Uh, So when I was, um, it was my aunt who had it, but we all lived within like half a mile of each other. So um, I would go over and hang out. And this one particular exchange student, she um, she came when I was like four and then she actually ended up coming back every few years to oh, visit. Cool. Yeah. So, um, I kind of, gr- she was one of these people that I sort of grew up with and she would always, every time she came, she would bring little candies and gifts mm-hmm. and all those like adorable things that come from Japan. Um, and she would also teach us words. So, you nice. know, I, I felt like I had a distinct advantage over the other anime kids because I had this background. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but I listen to a lot of um, Japanese music and such, and one of my favorite bands from that time is The Pillows, and I they're 
probably most known for being the official soundtrack of Fooly Cooly. I shook my head no. No, shaking heads. No, no idea what you're talking uh, about. It's an anime. <laughs> it's, it's great. There's like a robot with a TV for a head and this uh, Vespa driving girl with a bass guitar. Mm-hmm. You know, just put that into an anime with like a bunch of really hardcore rock music and... Um, I'm sorry, I'm like looking off in the distance because there's this <laughs> this comic book that I cannot remember the name of, but they have Lion Cat. Do you know Lion Cat? No. Oh, okay. And there's a character with a TV for a head, and it's like tip of my tongue right now, and I'm like, it's all coming back to the comic book right now. Oh. It's fantastic, but I just can't remember okay, the name. Well, of it. at some point we'll get it. <laughs> It'll be my next week's, yeah, you know. We'll get an update on that. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> not even joking, to this day, I still want a Vespa just because of the influence from the show. <laughs> like, it's always made me want a Vespa, even though I probably would be terrified if I drove a Vespa around the city. Um, but, you know, whatever. We can all have our dreams. Dream big, as we said in our last mm. episode. The name of the comic book is Saga. and I know what you're talking about. I've yeah. heard about Saga. There's a, a big cat that one of the... Uh, like Han Solo, not Han Solo, uh, like uh, Bounty Quit. Hunters? Bounty Hunters, oh. that's what I meant. Um... Uh, has and it's a big cat and whenever anybody tells a lie he goes lying and he's that's amazing a fabulous character that's yeah. one of those that's been on my list to um, oh, yeah. read for quite a while I i've only to- read up to like episode seven but i couldn't ha- it was so good i couldn't handle reading month to month <laughs> so I, now there's probably like 40 out but i haven't gone back to it but i just i mean it was, one day it was too heart wrenching to wait you'll so. have like a whole weekend where you just yes, completely catch up exactly like it's my um Adventure Zone binge, mm-hmm. where mm-hmm. through, like, two, two uh, years so of content. Now. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, so, total aside, that was a great <laughs> anime, and um, I discovered this band through them, and I really liked them, and I started listening to it just before Adrian came over to film this, record this. God, one day I will get the words <laughs> right. I don't know. Maybe not. We're filming and then cutting out the, the video. <laughs> the video. <laughs> This is all just on my phone camera right now. Um, Anyway, so uh, I started listening to it, and we've talked before about how I have these really strong sort of like associations, associations? Um, and it's like I immediately went back to being 17, like I wanted to play DDR and watch Cowboy Bebop and eat a bunch of green apple high chew candies because <laughs> <laughs> I was listening to the song. But um, it's actually also kind of good. And I mean, you know, I joke because it does actually make me feel like back into my 17 year old headspace. But I really like my 17 year old headspace. I feel yeah. like there's a lot of things I look back on that 17 year old me thought and said that were not cool and not appropriate, and I <laughs> shake my head very solemnly and judgingly at <laughs> past me for the things that I thought were acceptable. Um, but also, it was before I got anxiety, um, and I was just super chill. I was super... <laughs> nice. not Well, okay, I was super chill. Yeah. I let things just roll right off my back. I was totally cool to, like, confrontation, did wow. not bother me. Yeah. Man. I remember this one. So I was... Uh, what happened? I know. Well, <laughs> fibromyalgia happened and then oh. I got general anxiety. Um, yeah. But, you know, I'm working on it yep. uh, to the point that I can. Uh, but I was, uh, like, editor of the yearbook. That was all I... I was <laughs> super nerd. I was on the newspaper, uh, the, like, the newspaper team for my high school. And I was also was editor of the yearbook. Year, I it, didn't like it. it. I was obsessed. I'll have to show you my yearbook at some point because I got to have the little like editor in chief blurb at the end. I was not even pictured in my senior yearbook. Oh my god! No, this was all I did. In fact, I was I was in college classes. I took yeah. two independent studies just so like I spent half of my day every day senior year in the journalism room mm. because I was either there for yearbook, for newspaper, or for the like multiple independent studies I ended wow. up with. Yeah, that's all I did. Um, <laughs> but I remember so. The football team was huge, right? Mm. Um, And there was some... I mean, I'm I'm not going to remember all the details, but we couldn't list out every single name of every single player in that picture without giving it that picture alone and that caption its own, like, half page. Mm -hmm. So we... I made sort of a, you know, just... I just made a decision that for my yearbook, we were not going to do that. 
they would all be listed at another Ooh. point. Yeah. <laughs> but they weren't going to be listed in the caption for every single one. Yeah. You know, there's there was there's just not enough room. I'm sensing some drama. And the parents freaked out. <laughs> so, and I remember my, my teacher telling me, like, oh, they're, they're throwing a fit. They're not very happy about this. But we didn't have the space, and we weren't going to give them... Like, I personally have always had an issue with the fact that, um, I mean, you know, if you like to play football, that's great. And I I support that as much as I support, uh, like, any other endeavor. It's a little bit violent, but, you know, <laughs> everyone who's who's participating has signed up for it. So I guess, you know, that's a thing, consent. Yeah. Um, but... A lot of teenage anger. There's those, a lot of anger. Yes. yes. Mm-hmm. But I don't think that... This one arbitrary activity deserves to get like a million dollars when something like the chess club gets like barely acknowledged, you know, Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like you have a full stadium. You have all these things like you don't need to have two extra pages in the yearbook than every other group. This is just my my personal stance, and it was my yearbook because I was the editor. So so controversial. Right I know. Now. <laughs> and so the the parents wanted to like talk to me about it, and I oh remember God. I remember my teacher telling me this, and I was just like, "All right, bring it on. I will see them in this office, and I will talk to them." And I remember I got one of those T shirts that's like printed, so it has a a tie printed on it i was like i'm gonna look super professional and i'm gonna go and talk to them and i'm gonna speak all this business stuff and like i had no fear at all yeah um, i was just ready to take it all on and like do all these projects and just who, yeah just make who, it happen i can't believe this just parents caring that much about it it's they not like did, a, though it's like there's so like, many bigger things in life who cares about your kid's picture and their yearbook well i mean they're mentioned elsewhere it's not like the name isn't anywhere just what just do some more things with your life than like helicopter parent over your kids like right i mean we even had this printout with every name of every student in the school that year Mm -hmm. and every time they got mentioned we would put a mark by their name Mm -hmm. so that way you knew this person has already been mentioned like three times let's find somebody else to interview for this particular story or whatever. And we put in a lot of effort to make sure everyone at least had one mention beyond their school photo. Mm -hmm. So, like, they were covered. (laughs) Like, I think it's going to be fine, but it Uh was a huge throwdown moment. Again, total, total tangent. (laughs) That was a real tangent. I was like, wait, oh, Wings at 17. I know, like, I have some feelings, apparently. Um, But no, so, like, I just feel that that time in my life, I had this really... I had this this sort of attitude and approach to life mm-hmm. that has, um, in some sense, been my goal ever since fully realizing that and getting to this place in my current right. point of life. Yeah. Um, it's kind of trying to get back to that point where I let things roll off my back more mm-hmm. and that I just kind of do me and face these things down. And right. listening to this music has been 100% inspiring <laughs> me to do well, that. I think it's probably like, I mean, you were probably a bit of a jerk back then. Probably. So uh, you can at least, <laughs> <laughs> if you like have that much bravado and stuff, you know, you could probably be like, we're like, psh, at, like you know, like at people like at Starbucks and stuff. I could see that attitude at 17 being um, a bit of a, a jerk. And so I, you might not have been. But no, I was just about to actually tell you a story about um, <laughs> so, you being a jerk. <laughs> uh, the principal at my school. <laughs> okay, actually, so this is something that I was actually a side story to my side story. This is something that I've been meaning to address for a while. Right here on right this here. podcast. I know. You'll never hear it elsewhere. Because um, I kind of specifically dance around it because um, I have feelings about it. Um, We're going to make up for the lack of time in, the, in last week's yeah, podcast uh, yeah. with this one. This one is going to be heartfelt, a lot of feelings, <laughs> and a lot of time. Do it. I want to like hear it. Like 90-minute special episode. <laughs> okay, <good> um, <laughs> So uh, many of you out there on the internet <laughs> don't know this. I was originally given the name Rochelle when I was born. My family gave me the nickname Winx, and it stuck to the point that I had it legally changed later in life. I have been asked this before if that is my real name, um, and I typically, I mean, people who ask that I think are asking that, you know, just out of genuine curiosity. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I have nothing against somebody just being curious about me, Mm -hmm. and especially, you know, like more of friends and stuff, um, or like, you know, just general internet friends that 
totally fine. So nobody feel bad if you've asked me this. <laughs> but I usually just respond with, that is my name, yes. Because um, I think that there's too often people are treated as if their chosen name is not their real name just because it wasn't what was originally given to them. And I especially feel strongly about this because... Um, a lot of people who are trans mm -hmm. don't go by the name they were given at birth. Right, yeah. um, and so I just feel that saying that one name is more real than the other um, is not the way to go. Mm -hmm. So, again, I just answer with, that is my name, yes. <laughs> so uh, to kind of skirt around that, it is my legal name, but I don't think that just because I have it on my ID and whatever needs to distinguish the fact that it's my real name if I'm saying that it's my name. Right. Yeah. yeah if that, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> uh, but part of the reason why I actually got it legally changed was, I mean, for one, I just have always identified with it more. It's the name that I prefer to go by. Yeah. When um, I first knew you, you were going, I was Rochelle at work. Yeah. So, and see, yeah. that's the thing. I always felt like I was, um, like I needed to use my legal name right. in a space like work. Yeah. Um, because Winx is kind of a like wacky nickname and has no connection to my legal name um, or my old legal name. So um, I just would go by Rochelle, but then nobody was calling me Winx because I didn't live in the state that I used to live in. And I felt really weird about it and really mm -hmm. uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So I changed it. But everyone is like even back home when people would see my name they called me rachel ah uh. and it drove me <laughs> crazy so the principal of my school would call me rachel <laughs> i was in his office constantly like i wasn't <laughs> getting in trouble but i was going in to give him interviews and stuff right, and i would yeah. correct him like all the time and he always called me rachel um <sighs> So, uh, getting back to your point about me being, uh -huh. like, <laughs> a terrible child, um, or I don't know, you know, a jerk. I got really upset one time, and he came to school one day, start of the year, and he was growing in this mustache. And it wasn't very even. It was a little <laughs> bit patchy. And I mean, like, you know, whatever. Like, we don't have control over how our bodies grow uh -huh. hair. Like, what, who, you know. And he liked it. He thought that it made him look... I think he, his phrasing was that it made him look young and hip. Um, oh. I know. This is, I, like, already, I, this is one of those cases, like I said, where I look back and I'm like, past winks, why? Why? I, I wish mustaches weren't looked down upon because I, I like them. But. I mean, I think some mustaches are fine. This one mm -hmm. wasn't to my particular taste. Um, I can imagine based I wrote, on what you said, yeah. I wrote a uh, newspaper story about it. Oh, no. <laughs> It was like a horror themed one. And it was called It Came from the Stash. Did he I, shave it? He shaved it like the oh, next week. Oh no. <laughs> the week after it came out. I had quotes from students being like, Oh, I was terrified. Uh -huh. I saw it coming down the hallway. And oh, no. <laughs> I don't know. I was terrible. I really was. I like Well, I mean, there's like uh you talk about like microaggressions. Yeah. Um and it almost sounds like one, even though Rochelle is a normal name. It's not like, you know, when yeah. you talk about microaggression, sometimes it's like, um, you know, uh, like a name that's unusual or something mm -hmm. that people keep on mispronouncing. But Rochelle is just Rochelle. Like, everybody should know. Yeah. And it's, it's spelled differently than Rachel. Right. Like, and the Indian is spelled the same as with Michelle, but everyone says that right. Right. But they can't say mine. Yeah. I mean, literally. So it's I, like you, you just keeps on hitting you. Yeah. Little, until no. you just like, I'm I, done. <laughs> I was there all the time. Like I said, yeah. I was just constantly in that office. I mean, even at my high school graduation, <laughs> they mispronounced my name. I was getting wow. some award for being in like the top 5% or something. Yeah. Um, but this one was actually a great moment because um, in this particular case, it was the vice, pres vice uh, principal who mm -hmm. did it because no one in the office apparently knew my name. Um <laughs> So he goes up to give me this award, and he's like, Rachel! The whole senior class yells back, Rochelle! <laughs> Lovely. I just felt so vindicated. I was yeah. just like, thank you, finally, somebody. Um, but yeah. Nobody can mispronounce winks. This exactly. is perfect. Well, yeah. well yeah. one person asked if it was Win X. Win X? Yeah. Like Windows? Like win, like a Windows program or <laughs> I something. I was yeah. thinking. Um, Windows XP. <laughs> which that I could see as like a hacker name or something. Yeah. You know, but... I would pronounce... I would... You would spell the X capital. Yeah, right? but I... That is the one time since having it changed that was anyone it has... online? Or was it in person? It... I'm not going to say because it was one of our old co-workers. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I just went up like online or not, so it was definitely not online, so that's interesting. No, that's no, interesting. it was an in-person thing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, guaranteed she will never listen to this, so. Okay, good. Uh, yeah. No. <laughs> anyway, 
to fun fact to anyone out there who didn't know that, my <laughs> legal birth name was not Winx. Mm-hmm. Winx is my name. It was Rachel. <laughs> Adrian, we're done. <laughs> I'm po- I had to do it. I'm, I'm podcast breaking up. I saw that. I saw that pause, and I said, "Take it." I'm going to tweet you a breakup, <laughs> but I don't tweet. Oh, no. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. Will you forgive me for that? I will actually. Okay. Um. So yeah, that's my uh, that's my story about being a a little jerk in school. All right. But I had a good attitude. I was yeah. scrappy. Yeah. We'll say that. Scrappy's good. I was scrappy. I mm-hmm. wasn't I wasn't just like going out and, you know, being a jerk to be a jerk. Yeah. I was I was uh sticking up for the little person who is me. <laughs> <laughs> that reminds me of like a really tiny story from yeah. my elementary school. So for whatever we got this new principal when I was like in fourth grade. And we had before that it was like the normal lunch hour. You go in there and there's kids screaming and you're all with your friends and it's mm-hmm. happy times. But then this principal decided that uh lunchtime was silent hour. And if you talked, then you would be sent up to the stage, you know, because it was like the cafeteria with the stage. Yeah. And you had to sit up there and eat your lunch. And I was, it was like, we're eight or nine years old. Like, are you serious? You know? Oh my God. <laughs> it was absurd. And so uh, one, I don't remember if we like organized it, but I was just like so outraged by this that I decided instead of speaking out, I just like we sat down and five minutes after lunch started, I just stood up and I walked up and I sat at, on the table <laughs> <laughs> and like five other kids did it too. That's and amazing. just being like, I don't give a shit about your rules. And we didn't talk at all. We just went up there and sat on the stage and then we That's got sent to the principal's office Amazing. and we got sent like a letter going home and my, I sat down with my parents and they read it over and they were like, good job. I was like, thanks. Um, okay, I have <laughs> yeah, to... Yeah, because screw that. What an absurd rule for eight, like, six to ten-year-olds or whatever. Like, why would you do that to them? That's, like, the one time where they should be able to talk. Right. Kids, like, you need... Yeah, recess... You, they, you need recess and you need lunchtime. Like, yeah. you're sitting... You have to sit quietly in class for hours. You're, Children will actually explode. Yeah. Scientifically proven. <laughs> Just have little, like, explosion piles all over the place. Yep. Um, I have to give a complimentary story to that. <laughs> This will just be story hour. I know. This will actually just be, like, the time where we just talk. <laughs> There's no practical purpose. Yeah. I'm going um, at an hour to, before this that we were also telling stories. So exactly. It's, yeah. Too bad um, we weren't recording that. Uh, some good ones. We did have some very dramatic ones. Yeah. Give me chills. Uh, yeah. Maybe one day. You guys will hear that. <laughs> we're already, like, getting some deep issues here. Um, so my grade school had a lot of rules, which I think are really stupid. Mm-hmm. I mean, that... That is harsh, but I think that they were really stupid. Mm -hmm. Personal opinion. One of them was the way that they dealt with lunch. So, um, for for one, the parents were required to pay for the school lunch. You could not bring your own lunch. You had to get That's the school lunch. Up. It's it was a way for them to get extra funds because it was yeah, one of these like a lot of poor kids and stuff. That's really fucked up. Yeah, well, I mean, in order to go to the school, mm-hmm. like it wasn't it wasn't oh. a public school. Okay. It was a private yeah. school, so you already had to pay a lot. Okay, um, and it was a very small school, so it was like in order to keep running, they needed to find extra ways okay. to make them. In a way, you get it, but also you yeah. shouldn't require everyone to do that. Whatever. Um, so they would require everyone to get their lunch. Not only did you have to get their lunch. Before you could go out to recess, they had to check your tray and make sure you ate a certain amount. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, there was there were so many schemes. People would, like, secretly pass the kid who was, like, always had a really big appetite. Be like, hey, like, Jared, <laughs> do you want my bread? <laughs> um, also, they had that, like, super cheap um, white bread. So we would tear the crust off and roll it up into a little ball yeah. and like, put it in your pocket. We had so many different little like. <laughs> it's like the Great Escape or whatever that movie was, and they yeah. had like the up the of the pants. They had all the dirt. Yeah, yeah. Were, like, we, we had all these schemes. For I remember one time I put green beans in a napkin and then put them in my pocket. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <'Cause>, <laughs> okay. Um. But anyway, so uh, they had these ridiculous rules, and I always thought it was stupid because like, then I would have to eat past the point of being full um and also i just have a left stomach problem so Mm -hmm. i was always having stomach problems anyway and then they're making me eat more of the food that is making me sick so it was it was not a great situation so we started doing this thing and my mom always thought the rule was stupid too so um we started doing this thing where beginning of the school year when we had to go get a physical or whatever we also had the doctor write a note that said this child cannot be made to eat more than she wants to eat Mm mm-hmm Nice. Deal with it. You know, the doctors can be like, uh, yeah, 
That's yeah, a stupid the doctor, rule. Yeah, the doctor was like, that's like really messed up. Let's not do that. So I would uh, bring this in. But before that happened, I remember this one day I was in second grade and I'm sitting there and mind you, I had eaten the proper amounts of most of the food, but they had this brownie. And the brownie was, I, I remember to this day, the taste of that brownie. Mm-hmm. It was not pleasant. Yeah. Like, it was, if eight-year-old me yeah. took in that taste so much that 29-year-old me still recalls it, <laughs> it was messed up. Yep. Um, and it's just sugar. Man. Yeah. yeah. It, like, it's not a nutritional part of your diet. Yep. You can live without the brownie. So I had taken a bite of the brownie and realized, like, what a horrific mistake I'd make by agreeing to have the brownie on my tray because it was not mandatory to eat the brownie but I asked for it so therefore I was supposed to eat it and the teacher came over and said you need to eat that brownie and I said I didn't want it and so she was like well you have to sit here until you eat it so I just kept sitting (laughs) and then eventually she came over and she's like you have to eat this brownie before you go out to eat and I'd been sort of gearing myself up for this but um my mom had told me this at one point so I looked at the teacher and I said well, my mom says that I don't have to eat anymore when I'm full, and she says that if you have a problem with that, you can just call her. <laughs> <laughs> they let me go to recess. <laughs> nice. It was great. Yeah, she calls your mom, and she's like, she won't eat her brownie. And you're like, right? <laughs> what? <laughs> like, can you imagine? <laughs> like, yeah, she, there, was, there was no Force winning Force feeding that. brownies to children. There was no winning that sen- yeah. sh- situation, and she knew it, so um, I got to go to recess, and yeah. I felt very proud of myself. Yeah. Um, so we have gone super far off uh, yeah. the the plane. This has here. been story hour. This with has been Winks and Adrian. We've only gotten past the part of what I've been into yep. lately. So, uh, Adrian, <laughs> what have you been into lately? Like, please, like, let's just. <laughs> yep. Well, uh, I've been talking about reading the King Killer series, and yes. I'm like more than halfway done with the second book after like two two weeks or something. And it's so good, and it's like. I have trouble putting it down. It's a severe obsession where I'm like, I drove in to work today and I was like, oh, well, but I, will, I didn't have that 40 minutes to be able to read. I had uh, <laughs> one of those, I'm like, can I like on my walk, this five minute walk to work, can I read while I walk? No, it's not going to work. And then I was just like. <laughs> I do that. I know, but I was like downtown and it was just no, like. No, I do that downtown. Oh, okay. It's really probably not good for me, but I do it. Yeah. I, it was like, eh, it's okay. I'll listen to a podcast for that five minutes because I can't go without silence. Well, I really, I like my headphones. I want them downtown, period. So Yeah, it actually, I, this is, I feel like this is just an episode where I say things that make me sound really bad, <laughs> um, but it keeps people from talking to me. Yes. Because they're, especially when the weather is nice, there's a lot of people out um, yes. trying to get like petitions signed and stuff, which I'm like totally here for, but they have people for the same petition mm-hmm. everywhere. So it's like, yeah. if you've signed it, you're still going to get asked about it 10 times before yeah. you get to the office. Well, there's a lot of weird, feel scammy ones where they're like, I remember this one where they lured me in. It was before I could get, pull off the s- sad smile, shake my head, and yeah. then they leave me alone. Um, but, and they were like, I was like, well, do you just have any information I can take with me or a website or anything? Mm-hmm. And they're like, no. And I was like, so the only way I can do this is literally writing my credit card number on this piece of paper that you're oh, holding. No. Uh, I would rather not do that. I would not <laughs> Sounds that. like you're just some random person on the street trying to like steal people's credit wow. card information. <laughs> I would not no. I can't imagine that would go well for them in general. Yeah, so <laughs> um anyway. Yes. That book. And I feel like I should just leave it there because we okay. talk so long. We can just That's move true. on. Yeah, there we go. I mean with you is, sacrificing is, uh, your update, uh-huh. that puts us back on on track with time. I was just gonna talk about some art things that I like, so I can talk about it next time. So. I, that's stay tuned for that listeners Art stuff. <laughs> anyway um so the things that we wanted to talk about i'm actually really excited we have two we're going to talk one about taking care of business aka care, yeah. productivity so, uh, hacks wherever that song goes uh something like that yeah i think yeah. you were pretty close i mumbled it so people probably didn't hear it i, I mean i heard it a little bit okay anyway go it on. was great Um, taking care of business, AKA productivity hacks and just general productivity routines. And then we're also going to talk about taking care of ourselves, AKA self-care hacks and Mm -hmm. self-care routines. Both of these things are things that I love to talk about. So (laughs) buckle in. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Are we going to go like you on me one, you on me one? Uh, that sounds pretty good. Okay. Um, okay. Let me, 
pull up because I have like a lot of notes on this. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I know, right? Um, this will be a 90 minute episode. Okay, well, the first thing that I want to talk about is something that I kind of talked about already. And that's like the associations. Mm-hmm. I'm super into the association game. So, for example, now that I have remembered how J-Rock makes me feel, <laughs> I plan on listening to that to kind of get pumped up about the projects that I'm doing and to go into life and confrontation and situations that are normally to me scary <laughs> and just pretend like I'm 17 and I don't care. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, um, yeah and I mean, and I've talked before about my... Uh, Hermione time turner necklace Mm -hmm. I wear that um there's a particular lipstick that I like to wear Mm -hmm. gothica by Kat Von D (laughs) Kat Von D is my makeup goddess oh yes Hmm. I mean she's also just really cool in general Mm -hmm. but love her makeup um and she has the gothica one it's like the exact color that I tend to go for sort of a um coral orangey like metallic it's got a little bit of glitter in a way that it doesn't look cheesy, but it looks yeah, fierce. Like shimmer or something rather than glitter. Yes, yeah. exactly. Gotcha. So um, that's my Fierce Lady lipstick. Nice. Yeah. That is, um, yeah, I mean, I have a mug that says, get it, girl. That's a to-go <laughs> mug. And I'll literally just bring that with me when I need that sort of mindset. Yeah. Um, those kind of things, those association things are, I do those super hardcore. Mm-hmm. So that is for sure one of my productivity hacks. Yeah me one uh so i use this time management style called the pomodoro style um i don't know why it's called tomato in italian but it just is it's either Um, way it's a fun name yeah and uh it's just basically uh so that you have 25 minutes where you're working on one task and then you have five minute break and then you have 25 minutes where you're working on another same task or no you just like section it out that way um and it also so it helps me concentrate so much. It w- Whenever I'm having one of those days where I'm scatterbrained and you just have them every once in a while, you can't concentrate, I just use that and it helps me just like, I, I write out a list of each task I need to do. And so I just like can go down the list and I you force yourself to spend 25 minutes on one task. And once you start forcing yourself down to that one thing, it starts putting you in that like a brain space that lets you like I've heard um, this is a really good way yeah, to approach things. I've never actually tried it. Yeah, and I don't know if it works for everybody, but it works really, really well for me. And also I have constant like neck pain from doing art <laughs> and a desk <laughs> job all the time. And so it reminds me to stretch my back every twenty five minutes. And so that's That's a really good one. And going, oh yeah, sit up straight, try to you know <laughs> so, I have such bad posture. Yeah. So it's a struggle. Yeah, and I mean, I'm only 29, so I need to make sure I'm not permanently damaging my back over time, so. That's, yeah, yeah, it's a legit worry. Yeah. (laughs) So one of mine is also sort of technological. Mm -hmm. Um, It's an app I love to use. It's called Habitica. Mm. It used to be called Habit RPG, but they changed the name at one point, and they realized, yeah, yeah, Habitica is fun. Um, I've talked a bit about this on social media because I'm completely obsessed with it. It's probably the main reason why I get anything done. <laughs> uh, but it's so cool. It's you, you gamify your life, which I'm just a huge fan of in general. But you make a little character. You have a little avatar. Um, you can pick out sort of the base look for it. And one thing that I want to say that I love about Habitica is that they have options, like, you can have a wheelchair for your avatar. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's like, lovely. They yeah. think of things that are just really needed and make it make me happy to support it. Yeah. Um, which, it's a, it's a free app, but you can also um, subscribe, which gives you extra, like, gems and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but so you make this character, you can make a list of habits that either are bad habits you want to break or good habits you want to form. You can make a list, uh, list of daily quests or daily tasks um so for example every day i try to meditate so i have a daily meditation thing and then if you don't get your daily all your dailies in you lose health points Mm -hmm. um and you can also have uh just like a general to-do list that you can go through so you get experience points when you do things and you can get um like gold and you can get a little like pet eggs and you can hatch them and you can like, uh, grow them up into mounts that you can do you have one yes i actually have like a bajillion of them <laughs> nice. like, i'm trying to collect them all because like you get them as an egg then you can hatch them with different potions mm-hmm. so there's nine base pets 10 different potion types so you can get 90 
of them. Oh, man. Then okay. You can feed them all, and they each like a certain type of food. Uh-huh. Uh, and once you... Like a, what was the... To, to wait, what was the little... Oh, tomodachi? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Just like <laughs> man, that. Man, So you um, feed them, and then when they... Like, their bar is totally full, they'll turn into a mount. Mm-hmm. Which, I mean, like, you can't... It's basically just for, like, your avatar picture. So you can have a little, like, pet by you and you can be riding on something. Um, But then, so once you have the mount version, you can make another pet version. So the goal is to get the mount version and the pet version of each one in each of the different, like, types. So there's a lot. Yeah. And you can have, uh, you have a class. So I'm a healer. Mm -hmm. And then you can be in a party. And so in our party, we fight different monsters and you you hit the monster harder if you do more things. Wow. When I originally signed up for this, it was super basic. So oh, yeah. it sounds like they added a ton of stuff to that. They really did. Because yeah. I signed up originally back when it was Habit RPG. Yeah, that's when I signed up too. And I did it for a while, and then I it ended really, up just stopping. Yeah, it didn't fit with how I do things. And then like a year or so ago, I signed back up, and it's so different. I love it. Mm. It's like it just everything is so good. So yeah. I'm in a party with uh, Jess and my friend Mike and uh, my friend Sonia, <laughs> and we will just like battle monsters and um, if one of us forgets to do a daily quest or whatever, it hurts everybody in the party. Oof, okay. Yeah, but I just heal us in the morning and then we're fine. <laughs> <laughs> there was one period where, like, uh, I think Jess died once because she was taking on a lot of challenges. And so, like, she took a lot of damage because she forgot to do or forgot to mark things off a couple days. Yeah. Um, and I wasn't paying close attention. Oh, so no. um, we did lose Jess at one point. But, um <laughs> The, the the consequences of dying are not that dire. <laughs> right. You just, like, lose a level and, like, one item or something. Um, anyway, as you can tell, I love it. Mm-hmm. It's really motivating. Um, anytime that I need to get something done and I'm just, I see myself stalling, I break it down into little mini to-dos and put it on yeah, Habitica. that's the way to do it. And just, like, cram it. Yeah. I mean, my second one is much more generic, but it's similar and just lists. And I wrote it down as like lists because they're like <laughs> my life or li- is lists. It's true. Um, one of the first things Adrian did when we decided yes. to do this was to make uh, like a to do list and a checklist yes. on Google Drive. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely necessary. I don't know. I, yeah, I just have like use the Notes app on Apple, and I bet there's a better one to use. But it's just I've been using it for years, and it like syncs up to your computer, so I can just like have all of my lists going like and so and they just turn into a mess and i add all these emojis to things that are like had like goat stars flames for like you really need to do that tomorrow like it's just like my own little like emoji language going on and all these notes so that's amazing <laughs> it's like um lots of goats when it's urgent <laughs> it's like the the flag symbol that they use on ships <laughs> except instead of like a flag it would just be like a flag with a goat on it yes yeah i just like the goat emoji so you know also true fact uh-huh. uh when i was i think eight or so um so i used to go to this retirement home <laughs> thing and this was my childhood uh so basically um uh, my mom like signed up to start uh sort of helping out this one person who was in our church parish um and she was a shut-in and needed help to like get groceries and stuff um and somehow this turned into me after school just getting dropped off at the retirement home and going and like hanging out with her but it was cool because she kind of became like a third grandmother um and yeah and so like i would go over there after school every day but then i started also just sort of like hanging out with the other people who lived there and there was this one guy who was like in the navy and he was telling me about the flag thing and i got super obsessed i learned the flag letters and then i used to write in a journal in flag oh wow but it's the least efficient thing that i could have ever done like it takes a little like, tiny 10 flag. seconds to make each letter <laughs> so, writing a sentence it's like 30 minutes that's amazing but i felt really cool when i was doing it i bet yeah <laughs> So the only other thing that I put down, which I, again, is kind of something that I talked about, is music. Um, and that just sort of putting me in the headspace, so I kind yeah, of I don't do feel like too. I need to go through that. Well, and caffeine. Mm. I mm-hmm. would not get things done without caffeine. Yeah. Um, but partly that's also because um, fibromyalgia makes me extra tired. Mm. So I pump up with extra chemicals <laughs> because that's a good way to live your life. <laughs> uh, yep. <laughs> Mine, uh, the last one I had was another app I like called Noisly, N-O-I-S-L-I, and it's when I'm, uh, when I, you know when you just, like, are, you are listening to music, but you're, you're trying to complete something, a task that's, like, really 
you need your full attention on it. Mm-hmm. And sometimes even music is just too much for me when I'm... And so this app is just like a... Uh, it's a background noise app, which I really oh. like. And it's really lovely. Um, I think the app actually costs a buck or two, but you can just get it like it's free on the like a, a browser. Um, but I'm going to show Winks the little icons. They're oh, like these cute. cute little icons. And then I can choose... I want to be listening to a fire with some wind and some rain right now. And it just adds those all the sounds together. Oh, so you can com- you can add multiple sounds? Yeah. And then you can, like, I want, like, water, but I want it kind of low. But I want nighttime sounds high. And I want a train track going. Um, but they also have, like, white noise and stuff like that, okay, too. Okay, this is an important question. Is mm-hmm. this only available for iPhones? I don't know. You can check it out. Okay. Uh, but it is free on desktop. So, noisely.com. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use that. It's great. <laughs> um, and they're solid. Like, they're not, you don't hear, like, the looping as much and that kind of stuff going on. I always have, like, fire with, like, a little bit of, like, wind in the background and stuff like that. And it has, like, little fire popping noises and stuff. It's really, it's nice. It's like ASMR. Mm, yeah. Um, just so everybody knows, this is available for Android. I just looked it up, and it is $1.99, and mm-hmm. I will be purchasing that. Yeah, shortly. I, w- I would say it's worth it. It's it's fantastic. That sounds fantastic. Yeah, that really does. Because one thing, um, I have gotten into electronic music a little bit. Mm. I used to think that electronic music was just like rave music. Mm-hmm. Um, then I realized <laughs> that there's like calm electronic as well. <laughs> yes, that's um, where I live. Which that, yeah, like I got on my face because I'm sitting here painting a music genre with a broad brush. Um <laughs> Apologies. It's not all house music. I hate house music, but I like a lot of. I mean, I like sometimes. Yeah, sometimes I just want to like rave it out in my in my living room or whatever. Um, I'm pretty. I like slow beat music. I generally like slow beat, but every once in a while, I need Mm -hmm. like a Lady Gaga dance party. Mm. I have different artists for that. So I mean, that's you know, that's all. Yep, that's all good. Um, But yeah, I, I have recently started discovering a lot of the electronic playlists that are on um like the amazon music Mm. uh so i will listen to that with my echo or just on the app or whatever um and i found that to be really good for working and writing i think that's why i gravitate towards a lot of like instrumental i like instrumental hip-hop and like trip-hop which trip-hop is like these are like fine-tuned like kind of trip-hop is like cut up uh, music and stuff like they cut up lyrics and stuff and oh. so it's not actually people singing it's just kind of like chopped up parts of songs and things Never like that. Never heard of this but that's fascinating. Yeah I, I really love it and it's like usually like really mellow and it's yeah I like I like a lot of instrumental music. It gets me in like that flow state really mm-hmm. easily and it keeps me there so I think that's like I end up just wanting to be that's where I want to live right in the, yeah. in, in the flow state doing artwork so it's that's what I like to listen to all the time. No that's good I mean because uh, I know Amazon has playlists for like electronic for creativity and stuff like that mm. so i i generally just pick out one of those yeah type of playlist that's already put together and stuff and it's yeah. pretty pretty good for spotify it spotify has a bunch of those they have like it's mellow beats i'm like mm, mm-hmm. also yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> so the other side of this is uh things that we do for self-care so um one of my things which um i've had a few conversations with people about it because it's it sounds kind of absurd to do this, but when I need to find time to relax, like I actually schedule mm-hmm. time to relax. Mm-hmm. I I have an itinerary for relaxation, <laughs> which sounds absurd. But when you're so busy, and I feel like a lot of people have a t- I feel like a lot of people have a hard time feeling justified in doing self care. Mm-hmm. They think that oh, this I shouldn't stop and take time for myself. I should mm-hmm. finish this project or whatever that Mm -hmm. I wanted to work on for so-and-so. I do that, and then I burn Um, out. (laughs) Exactly. Um, So I will specifically schedule it and say, okay, like, Wednesday at 7, I'm taking a book bath. Yeah. Here are the items that I have picked out for that book bath, and I might tweak it a bit, but it it is scheduled, and I will go and do that. Um, Mm, I should schedule that. That's a good idea. It's it's a good (laughs) idea, yes. It is. So, yeah, I, I am very into scheduling, and I use Habitica for it. Yeah. I actually have one of my habits is um, poning fibro monsters, which is when, when I get symptoms, I call them fibro monsters, and I have this whole uh, visual of me going out and, like, attacking them. Mm-hmm. And when the kitties are cuddling with me, they, it's basically, Mosa comes over and cuddles with me, and then in that mental picture, she is the cat from the statue. Yep. And she's, like, coming out and just destroying things. Yep. Nice. It's great. Um yeah, so that is one of my self care mm-hmm. tactics. Um, one of my, this isn't like a this is kind of me being 
philosopher in one way, or psychologist of some kind. But we're talking about we're both <laughs> uh, introverts, and so I think it's just the uh, the knowing, and I think uh, introverts just kind of realize this about themselves as they um, like they just experience life of just knowing that human other interacting with other humans lowers your energy level and so you need to know when when is the point and when do i need to like cancel plans and just be alone and just recharge your batteries and just like and that's just really important and like i'm really knowing like i actually like the last i started burning myself out a little bit last few weeks and i ended up like canceling a few things and being just like it's fine everything's fine these people don't care like i will be able to schedule again like in a few weeks um but that also kind of goes into this book that i read probably like eight years ago nine years ago and it was called it's called quiet uh the power of introverts in a world that just can't stop talking by susan cain i actually bought that book because you told me about it but i still have not read it (laughs) (laughs) um and it changed my whole worldview basically i had a lot of like Um, Because there's two thirds of the population is extroverts. And so they want to be going out on Fridays and doing all this stuff. And, and I had a lot of just guilt, unnecessary guilt for being like, when it's, it's sunny out, and it's like a Friday, and everybody's going out to the bar and whatever, you know, and I'll just be like, no, I just want to be home reading. And I just feel guilty about that for Mm -hmm. no reason, just because society is telling me that I should be going out on Fridays and Saturdays. That's what people do. Right. And I just, she like, basically, I was like, I read this book. And I was like, I forgave myself. It just like, I felt this moment of forgiving myself for, you don't need to be like that. You can be who you are. You know, and I just like, it was like, I'm just like, (laughs) oh. And I was like, what a useless waste of energy of feeling that way. And I was just, you know, I could feel stupid, you know, looking back on my. 21 year old self or this whatever is the only way that we know yeah. that we're growing as we yes. look back and feel stupid <laughs> yeah yeah exactly and so um yeah that's i highly recommend that book for anybody like anybody that anybody because you can under, understand introverts better when you and it's true um Empathy. if you're extrovert or understand yourself better if you don't really understand if you are it's i feel like it's important to understand if you're introvert or extrovert and just just for your own introspection to understand what you need and when you're feeling like lonely or something like you know Mm -hmm. just so yeah i agree now i really need to read that book Mm -hmm. you have sold me again (laughs) (laughs) i'm assessing my list okay so um i would say that my number one thing to do when i need self-care is reading slash taking a bath slash reading while taking a bath (laughs) Yep. <laughs> and this is a shock to no one. You know anything about me? Uh, what? <laughs> I know. This is why Book Bath Box exists because of that. Um, but I do want to give a pro tip because this is one I've I've mentioned this uh, uh, several times in videos and on Instagram and stuff. But every time I mention it, there's one person who leaves a comment that's like, "Whoa, you just blew my mind." <laughs> okay, if you want to read in the bath. Say you do not have a big collection of books, like physical copies. You have a Kindle, you have a phone, but you can't go reading in the bath with these devices. Ziplocs. Mm, I've seen pictures of your Ziplocs. Yeah. One of my favorite English professors in college, she told me about this. I'm surprised that works with a Kindle, like a, not a, um, we both have Voyager or whatever, the Voyage. My mom calls it Voyager too. Yeah. <laughs> just think of this, you know, I'm a Star, Star Trek, Trek fan. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, mom, we that, were just talking about that. <laughs> well, actually that one isn't a physical click either. It's, it's a, it's electrical impulses. It's like when you use your phone, like your finger, fingertip is the, it's not a physical click. It's a, but it gives you a tactile yeah. response. There's a little bit, but um, I mean, it's also like uh, screen you can just touch the screen. I'm just surprised you can, it re- registers it through the plastic. Yeah. But it does. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, especially when you're in the bath, too, it's like, because it's, it's just the pressure, I think, really. Really? Yeah, so it's, you know, I I mean, I've been doing it for several years, and I have not had any issues right. with it, so <laughs> I would say that that, at least that data I just, I'm like, it up. I need to experiment with a Ziploc bag in my phone now and well, figure maybe, this out. <laughs> maybe you should schedule yourself a book bath <laughs> yeah. and just do that. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a... It's a it's a tactic that I use quite often and I really enjoy. And uh, my quart size Ziploc is the perfect size for mm. the typical um, e reader, like yeah. a, like a Kindle Voyage or Voyager, depending on who you are. <laughs> <laughs>
And then uh, mine kind of similar to, well, uh, I've been realizing, I realized a few years ago how important, so I have a husband that lives with me, obviously, Mm -hmm. so I have a roommate, um, how important it is for me to have the house to myself sometimes. Um, And I actually start kind of going crazy if I don't have, like, it'll just be like three weeks and my husband hasn't like gone to go play games with somebody or anything. I just have never had any time. I actually start, like, getting really anxious, and I don't realize, and, like, I'm starting to try to realize when that's happening and be like, oh, right, I haven't had, I just need an afternoon to myself. Mm -hmm. Um, And that kind of goes into, like, me doing, taking that time to just do, like, art and, like, have music blasting and just kind of, like, just doing some kind of thing that I don't feel like anybody's going to walk in on me. I don't know, I don't know what it is, but it's just, like, the need to be absolutely alone doesn't matter if cole is in the other room or something it's just like the need to be absolutely alone i totally get that actually i i am the same way where i just need um i mean sometimes as long as i can be in a space and have enough distance from other humans Mm. then i can you know kind of feel yeah okay with it apartment isn't enough space for me yeah (laughs) i mean that's that's fair Um, (laughs) i need a mansion (laughs) uh i mean and you can help us with that by signing up for our (laughs) upcoming patreon (laughs) um no, uh, so that kind of actually goes along. Oh, sorry, I didn't want to. No, that was okay. it. Yeah. Uh, that kind of goes along with the last thing that I had on my list, which is um, asking for what you need. Oh, cat in the litter box. Oh, it's yeah. fine. Go. Okay. <laughs> It'll um, happen. <laughs> it's actually really good that Mosa is sleeping right now because half the time that YT goes in the litter box, Mosa thinks that is the best time to prepare to like attack her. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. So she'll start like doing the butt wiggle and getting ready to pounce as soon as YT yep. comes out the door. Um, it's, it's That's like a huge equal. problem at my house. <laughs> yeah. Um, but Mosa is very content over on the, on my chase right now. Uh, anyway, so, uh, asking for what you need. And this is partly, mm. I actually also have a book recommendation to go along with this, which is, um, The Art of Asking by Amanda Palmer. I really love that book. I like Amanda Palmer in general. I like her music. She has a TED talk about this too, I believe. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, and it, it was really good. And actually I... If you're going to read it and you are into audiobooks, I highly recommend the audiobook version because, for one, she narrates it, which I think in this type of book is just uh, it's just a better experience to hear the author saying mm-hmm. the words. Um, and she actually also puts in clips of her own music in between some of the chapters and stuff, which is just mm-hmm. really nice because I like her music. So. <laughs> <laughs> Ha-ha. Um, but it's just talking about you know, the guilt that we have of asking for things mm-hmm. in general. Like, it just, you feel like you need to be totally self-sufficient and just be able to, like, do all these things yourself. But sometimes you just kind of need something. Yeah. And um, one example that I have of this is, um, again, you guys know at this point that <laughs> I have fibromyalgia. Um, and sometimes when I'm at work, I will be doing fine and then I'll kind of hit a point where... I'm just really not feeling well. And if I could lay down for like 15 minutes, I would be good to go. But that's like, I'm not going to just go lay on like the floor of the office. Um, So I just went to HR one day and asked if I could have a little like sofa for my office. And they said yes. Mm -hmm. And it was just as easy as asking. But I spent so much time being like, oh, I don't know. Is that too much? Can I just... But the worst they could do is say no. Yeah. As long as it wasn't, like, some super luxurious, like, memory foam gold-plated couch, like, they were pretty okay with it. You yeah. know, I just found something off, like, overstock, um, and now I can lay down. And it, mm-hmm. it, it makes such a difference in my work day when I'm not feeling well to have that little, like, respite, and then I can get back to work. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, asking for what, what you need. It's awesome one. Exactly. Yeah. Did you have anything else? No. Nah. Okay. Well, we are actually uh, just coming up to an hour. Hey, so this was a 90 minutes. This good was a us. good one. We did good. Um, so thank you guys so much for listening. I almost said watching, but I got my, I caught myself there. Adrian is distracted by YT, who just sauntered oh, away. Yeah, in. she came over and then headbutted me, so. <laughs> yeah, so give us a follow on iTunes, or I should say subscribe on iTunes, and subscribe to our YouTube channel if you would be so inclined. Um, If you do it on YouTube, not only do do you get to listen to us, but you also get to look to look at, wow, I'm going to start that sentence over. (laughs) If you subscribe on YouTube, not only do you get to listen to us, but you also get to listen talking. Oh my God. (laughs) Am I going to be blessed with YT on my shoulder? Yeah, you might also get scratches down your back though. Oh, 
That'll be interesting. As uh, I start screaming. You can, like, pick her up and she will be very happy instead of... Because she, she looks like she's going to, like, make this happen. Um, if you hold her kind of like a baby, like, with her, so her front paws could go on your shoulder, ah. that is what she likes. <sighs> Yeah, go. just like that, and just, like, support under her legs. Oh, oh no, nope, got no, it wrong. No, nope. She's gone. Okay. You gotta get the special touch with cats, yeah, you it's, know. It's a specific style, but you And can... they're like, you, you ruined it. Well, this sometimes Saunters it's... out. <laughs> she's so... Most is just, like, glaring judgmentally. Oh, um, most. <laughs> also, sometimes she, like, she'll be into the shoulders, but then she'll decide that she's not if yeah. you're sitting. Ah. It's the height thing is a... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Thank you guys for listening. <laughs> uh, give us a subscribe on... Uh, I'm I... keeping all of that, by the way, because I'm editing this one. Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> subscribe to us on iTunes and YouTube. And if you subscribe on YouTube, not only do you get to listen to us, but you get to look at some of Adrian's fabul- fabulous artwork, mm-hmm. which is really adorable. Um, you can also follow us on Instagram at Marshmallow and Mimosa. And we are on Twitter and Snapchat, though who knows how much we'll post on Snapchat. Um, <laughs> yeah, at, we um, post mostly on Instagram. Lots of cat pictures and awesome things. That's true. Uh, Twitter and Snapchat, we are Marshmallow Mosa. Mm-hmm. And you can also find us on marshmallowandmimosa.com. Yeah, and tell people if you like us or something like that. Yes, yes. we are trying to up our subscriber count. Our goal is to hit 100. <laughs> we should set a date for that. Uh, because yeah. otherwise, like, that's just a really... Like, that's less of a yeah. hard-to-hit goal. It's so we're less... hard to know, because we don't have our uh, metrics going for iTunes. <laughs> yeah, we don't. We haven't quite figured out how <laughs> analytics work on there. We um, just have to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> so. Once we get that set up, we will set a, we'll set a deadline yeah. for this goal. We'll see, if, well, if, we'll see if anybody subscribed, and then that will determine. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I think I subscribed, so. Well, <laughs> does that count? <laughs> I don't know. Um... Either okay. way, you can help us with our moonshot goals here. Yeah, marshmallows, you do it. Yeah, yep. marshmallows. Moonshot marshmallows. To all you marshmallows out there. Yep. All right, then. Bye. 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 <laughs> <laughs>